Hello, I'm Mayor Cheryl Brothers. I'm here at the Orange County Animal Care Facility in Tustin. Because we are social distanced here, I am going to take my mask off for the rest of this video. This Orange County Animal Care Campus includes this two-story building, 20,000 plus square feet of six kennels, several fenced play areas for dogs, and a caged outdoor play space for cats. This facility opened in March of 2018. It's definitely a five-star resort compared to the former facility in Orange. I'm here with Andy Bernard. She's a director here at the facility, and she's going to share some information with us. So Andy, thank you for joining us today to update our community on the services you offer and talk about this beautiful facility. So what are some of the services that you provide here? Fountain Valley is one of the cities that contracts with you plus others. Yes, that's correct. Basically, we do service 14 contract cities as we also service Fountain Valley and our services, our most popular services that we um, provide services for uh, include the um, adoptions for domestic animals, basically cats and dogs and bunnies. We have exotic animals sometimes too. We also provide lost and found services. So if you've lost your animal, of course, they can come and redeem them if their animal is here. And we provide essential field services. So if there are any emergencies out there in the field where either animals and or members of the community are in need of a safety call for an animal, then we will provide that service as well over the phone and we'll respond um, in person. And uh, last, of course, we have our foster services and barking dog programs over the phone as well as online licensing. So what should I do if I find a stray animal, a dog or a cat, or if I find a dead animal, either in my yard or in the road? Okay, so if you find a cat, we are only taking in sick, injured, or aggressive animals related to cats. And if you find a dog, we're also taking in sick, injured, or aggressive dogs. But because there are leash laws, we will also take in dogs. Just give us a call. If a dead animal is called, same thing. They can either go to our website or call us and our customer service line will take them to the appropriate person to basically file a report and we'll respond to that call. Terrific, okay. So if you uh, pick up a dead animal, let's say it's a dog and it has a license, then do you notify the owner? Any dog that uh, we find, we'll, micro we'll check to see if there's a microchip um, and we'll of course notify their owner that their animal is with us and has passed away. We do definitely encourage everybody to get a license for their pet, no matter cat or dog. And absolutely, because if their cat or dog is licensed, they get a unique ID number and of course a tag mm -hmm. that has their name and a phone number to contact. And that's the quickest way you're gonna get your pet home. You mentioned cats. Do I need a, a, a license for my cat? It is voluntary, but again, we do encourage it because it's the quickest way to get your, your cat home. Uh, period because we'll be able to take that cat in out in the field or not. You can even sometimes take it to a pet store and have that chip scanned there and we can identify through there where that cat belongs. Terrific, terrific. Yes, I see on uh, social media, a lot of people posting lost dogs and cats. Some get returned <laughs> home, some find their way and some unfortunately uh, don't. But. Uh, shift gears a little bit and my neighbor has a dog and it barks all night so what do you recommend that I do so if there is a barking dog complaint we do recommend that you communicate with your neighbor or whomever it is uh, first um, either by letter or in person and if you're not able to resolve it that way then we do recommend that you call our operations line here again our website will uh, take you to our customer service line and that is at 714 nine three five six eight four eight and they can file a barking dog complaint over the phone and we'll handle it from there terrific and that information will be on your screen so i've lost my dog or cat uh, they've gotten out of my house or out of my yard um, what can i do to to try and find it and how can you help here so we do have a lost and found pilot program if you visit our website you can basically follow those steps there but also we recommend that 
anyone who's lost their pet post flyers two to four blocks around the neighborhood. They can also go to Nextdoor or PetInfo.com and Facebook, those types of applications provide areas, um, platforms where you can post your animal, information about their animal, when it was lost, and a picture. And of course, if you call our staff, they will uh, walk you through that program as well. It's a new impound method that we have been working with since COVID. And that is to basically keep people from coming in here, hang on to a pet, but basically will help facilitate that animal, find its way home fastest. And usually these applications online are very useful because people are posting pets that they've either lost or found. And again, the pet license thing is also very useful because the information is right there on that tag. For them. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm interested in getting a new pet. So what kind of animals do you have for adoption and how does the process work? So traditionally we have dogs, cats, puppies, kittens, rabbits. Sometimes we have exotic animals like birds, turtles, chameleons, you never know. So visit our website for sure if you're interested in adopting a pet. The process actually has changed since COVID as well. And that is a, an adoption of appointment system, which has been working for us. It's very strong because it encourages a matchmaking of the person adopting and the pet here in our facility because there's a conversation to be had. And so we found that is a very strong way to actually adopt a pet because they can schedule an appointment, come in after they've identified some animals that they're interested in. And from there, if they've found an animal that they're interested in, they can basically uh, go through our process, fill out the paperwork and address uh, any questions that they have and go from there. If I've identified a pet, let's say a dog or a puppy, uh, is there an opportunity uh, for my family to spend some time with, with that animal? Currently, due to COVID, uh, I would say that they could schedule an appointment with the animal and come in and spend about 15 minutes to a half an hour with the animal. But we do not have a program to date where you can basically have an animal um, just for a period of time and then return it. But we do have our foster program for puppies and kittens and dogs or cats with special needs. When you schedule an appointment and we ask that you select up to two IDs, animal IDs, and we'll basically have those animals ready for the appointment. And in our new play yards out there, they can come visit. We'll bring the animals uh, to the adopting family and they can visit for some time. So if I've checked your website and I've determined that you may have impounded my cat or dog, probably, uh, how do I then go about retrieving it? So you can either schedule an appointment to redeem your animal and or we'll accept walk-ins as well because of course we want pets to make it home with their family members as soon as possible. Can you share with us a little bit of how your uh, entire service project has been impacted with, since COVID? Have you uh, seen a higher level of adoptions during this time? We have definitely been impacted largely by COVID and uh, first and foremost, I'd say that we had re-engineered our entire operation towards adoptions. So adoption appointments, I should say, and those adoption appointments probably are the most key. It's still occur. We are still being able to provide adoption services uh, very strongly, but I'd say that that was probably the um, largest impact to our operation along with our field response where we were able to move a lot of our services um, either over the phone and or respond to really social services. In addition to that, um, we have licensing over the phone and we're again doing redemptions uh, by either appointment or walk-in, but we've also seen um, a large number of the community basically help us with fostering more animals. Mm -hmm. So that has definitely increased quite a bit, I'd say by about 40%. And we've seen a decrease though in just intake here because we are taking in sick, injured or aggressive animals um, at large by I'd say also about 40% decrease there. And we do still have quite a bit of animals here, but I think that's because we have a very, very unique um, community here in Orange County where we have a very long kitten season as well as a um, high volume of large dogs. I see. I suspect large dogs are uh, sometimes the hardest to uh, find a family for. Yes, and specifically because of the community and, and basically uh -huh. um, just rules around them. So do you offer any free services here at the uh, care center? and? What about shots? 
So we do have our pet pantry on the second Saturday of every month where we're distributing free food right here um, through our parking lot. And we also uh, partner with Heart where they do vaccinations uh, on a monthly basis. And that's also provided here in our parking lot. Check our website for information. And other than that, if we are hosting a, an adoption event where there might be a subsidized um, or a low fee adoption event, that's also online. Terrific. Okay. So whatever I'm interested in regarding my pet, I can find most likely find that information on your website. Absolutely. We have pet of the week emails that go out too. So stay tuned for that. Oh, terrific. So for animal lovers out there, uh, is there a way to help the facility here? Is there a way to donate? And what are you looking for? Because of COVID, again, we encourage uh, members of the community to donate, of course. And if you would like to, we ask that they go to our website and basically look at what their what the needs are for the animals. Um, they change because of the population of animals that we may have it might be cruelty cases or hoarding cases, things like that. But um, on our website, you'll see um, needs for either food or leashes, blankets, things like that. When you're having an event in Fountain Valley, we'll know about that and we'll put it up on our website also, but it will also be on yours. Yes, it'll be on our website and or our Facebook page. Terrific. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, share with our community on your services? Any other comments you'd like to make? Uh, just that we encourage everyone to go to our website, check out the services we have and come in, schedule an appointment to adopt a pet. And if you'd like to drop off a ballot, of course, we have our official ballot box over here too in our parking lot. <laughs> I see that. All right. Yes, we have several of them in Fountain Valley. Well, thank you for sitting down with me today. And I know our audience has learned more about our new, new and improved Orange County Animal Care. Yes, thank, thank you, you Andy. Thank you, Mary. On other news, a reminder, there are three voting centers in Fountain Valley. You can vote in person there or drop off your ballot at the center at Founders Village, that's the Fountain Valley Senior Center on Bouchard and Talbert. Freedom Hall, which is in Miles Square Park on Euclid and the Orange County Water District on Ward. On the screen, you'll see dates and hours for those voting centers. On Tuesday, October 27th, HICAP, what's new for 2021? That's part of the Blumen Zuman Seniors Speaking Series. They'll talk about open enrollment taking place on October 15th through December 17th join HICAP as they discuss what changes will be coming in 2021. Don't miss this opportunity to get informed and ask questions that will enable you to make the good healthcare decisions that are appropriate for you. Remember, it's important to get a flu shot this winter season. The county is offering free flu shots at the Orange County Fair and Event Center on October 30th from 7 to 3 p.m. Registration is required. That information is on your screen on how to register for your free flu shot. The County Health Department also provides COVID-19 testing at super sites. There is one at the Anaheim Convention Center, the Orange County Fair and Event Center. And if you're unable to get testing, with your insurance provider, you can go to one of those super sites. Follow the decision guide to see if you need a COVID test and that information is on your screen. State officials have released guidance for safer Halloween celebration during COVID-19. The guide strongly discourages traditional trick and treating and encourages families to plan safer alternatives. Suggestions might include a candy scavenger hunt at home, scheduling online activities like pumpkin carving and costume contests, and car-based tours of Halloween displays. There's a list of other activities on your screen.
The safest way to celebrate Halloween is to spend time with people in the same household or to celebrate virtually. Some specific alternatives that are low risk but still capture the holiday fun include, and there is a long list of possibilities on your screen. This information will also be on the city website. An option for Halloween afternoon is at the Fountain Valley Heritage Park. That's the park next to the library in Fountain Valley. From noon to 4 p.m., we're hosting a fall photo fest. There's a small donation at the gate for a family of up to six. There's a flyer on your screen with more complete information. So remember, be safe, mask up, stay six feet apart, and wash your hands frequently, even at home. Wear a mask that covers your nose. If it's not covering your nose, you're not wearing a mask. So until next time.